Hello, my name is Mark Webb. I'm a technical artist from the United States. This video is to demonstrate a tool that I've been working on, which I refer to as the Dropper Plugin. Uh, it's a new editor mode for Unreal Engine 4, which uses physics simulation for asset scattering and placement in your scenes. Uh, keep in mind that this is a work in progress, so you may see bugs and uh, many things will change before the final release. Uh, here in Unreal, we have a simple scene. This is just a default landscape that's been sculpted on a bit. Uh, we even still have the default textures here. There's nothing fancy going on. So let's switch to our new editor mode here by selecting it from the drop down, the same way you would select the foliage or the landscape modes. And you'll see right away that we've started simulating the game world because the simulate button that's usually here uh, has changed to a stop button. And then if I move my cursor around in the viewport, you'll notice that the there's a cylinder here which follows it around. This is where our assets are going to be spawned. And if I select an asset from the content browser here, uh, we can drag and drop it into this area and then this will add it to the list of assets that are going to be dropped. Then if we simply click in the viewport, you can get, we can uh, begin to drop them into our scene. So here in the toolbar, we have controls for changing how the actors are spawned. We can change the radius of the cylinder. We can change its height. And we can change how many actors are spawned at a time. Uh, we also have buttons to change from semi-automatic to automatic mode. And then once we're well, once you decide that we're happy with the locations of the actors, uh, we can click this button here to bake the locations so that they will be preserved when we stop the simulation. And we can do that simply by going back to the standard selection editor mode here. Uh, you'll notice that when I stop the simulation, the color of these spheres changes. Uh, that's because they have a material which selects a random color on begin play. Currently, the plugin is set up to only accept blueprints, so these here are just uh, static mesh assets. They're just wrapped in blueprints, and then they have simulate physics enabled. Uh, because the plugin can accept blueprints, you can you really aren't just limited to environment meshes. You can do some pretty interesting things, like you could uh, use it to scatter coins or loot for players to pick up, or seeds to, which would sprout into plants. Uh, anything really that you can fit into a blueprint is fair game. Uh, so let's add the rest of these assets and uh, go get, go a bit nuts here. You can see that the simulation scales upward quite well. Uh, we can really have a lot of actors being spawned at a time. If you go too crazy, you will see a bit of a performance hit. Um, but these are all uh, simple meshes, and they have collision geometry, which is set up pretty well. So uh, the hit is very minor. And as you can see, we don't really have any, any overlapping issues. They all just sort of nestle together uh, exactly like you would expect them to. Uh, and if you haven't noticed, this tool is also extremely fun to use. I frequently found myself just, uh, <laughs> you know, sitting here playing with the fun physics when I should be programming. So, oh, and one more thing, uh, before we move on, currently baking the actor locations doesn't replace them with instant static meshes, uh, but that's expected to change before the final release. I'm sure there are plenty of environment artists who already see the value of uh, using this for asset scattering instead of the currently available tools, but for everyone else, I'd like to take just a few minutes to discuss uh, why using a physics simulation makes so much more sense. So every object has what's called an angle of repose, which is basically the, the angle of a surface that the object can rest on without sliding off. So if you have an exponential slope that is to say an incline where every point along that incline is steeper than the previous point, um, then for every object that you want to put into your scene, there's a specific point along that slope where it where it can sit and, and it won't slide down, the maximum point. 
so you can see this demonstrated clearly if you have ever watched an hourglass. Um, sand accumulates until the angle of repose is exceeded and then that causes a cascade and all the sand particles they fall downward down the slope. Uh, and this is cool because no matter how big your hourglass is, the angle of repose stays the same as long as your material stays the same. So you could have a, an, an hourglass 100 feet in diameter and the angle would, would still be constant. Uh, so where is the angle of repose for the object that you're trying to put in your scene? Um, well, it depends on a lot of things. Um, a lot of it's the material of the object and the whatever surface you're trying to put it on. Um, it also it's also dependent on shape, weight, center of mass. Um, there are a lot of variables. So what do artists do? They guess, um, and frequently they guess incorrectly. Uh, if you don't believe me, let's look at an example. Here I have um, a rubber eraser, a piece of aluminum, uh, an ice cube and a small stone. I'll place them on a board here and then raise one end slowly. And when I do that, I'd like you to guess what you think the order of the objects is going to be. In, in what order do you think they'll fall in? So uh, that's sort of an unexpected result, right? We think of ice as being very slippery. Uh, now, this example is a little bit contrived. Um, in reality, uh, the, there's a difference between the point at which an object starts moving and when it stops moving. But what it does demonstrate is the fact that physics is weird and we shouldn't try to predict it. Uh, there's a reason why we roll dice and flip coins to approximate randomness. So let's look specifically at rocks and their representation in video games. This is sort of a pet peeve of mine. Um, so when you don't simulate your rock scattering, uh, you can get two kinds of errors that show up. Uh, the first is what I call rock humps. These are sort of generic piles of rocks that are moved into a position where they intersect another mesh and then they have a material set up which just sort of blends between them into the terrain. Uh, so there are a couple problems with this. The first is that there's a very obvious seam and the uh, the blend doesn't really hold up well to close scrutiny. The second problem is that these rocks, these humps, they're, they're never really correct for their location in the environment uh, because they're designed to be general purpose. So if you just look at this pile of rocks here, it appears to be sort of, sort of rubble, like maybe a, from a collapsed building, but there isn't really a reason for it to be here. Um, the only reason that I could come up with is that maybe someone sort of came along with a wheelbarrow and just kind of dumped it here. Um, but the large pieces of debris, they're sort of on top and they're they're laying flat uh, on top of the pile. It's just, it doesn't seem right and natural. Um, so I, I don't want to criticize this artist too much. This is obviously a very successful image overall, and we're just looking at one part of it, which is a bit unfair. Uh, but it's worth noting, though, that, that this could be improved. Um, and this image, it came from the top row of posts on ArtStation's trending page today. So clearly, this is a tools problem. So the second common issue with rocks in video games is what I call uh, half penetration. Uh, this is where an artist wants to quickly scatter just a few loose stones over a flat surface, but they use the foliage tool to do it and the pivot points for all the rocks were in the center uh, of their, their sort of center of mass. Uh, this is typical with Megascans assets, and when you use this without sort of tinkering with the settings, it causes rocks to be, to sort of get stuck halfway submerged in the ground mesh, sort of like a submarine. And it creates a very obvious seam, and light isn't able to shine underneath the rock correctly. There's no shadow here. Uh, rocks are almost completely almost always completely concave so their supporting footprint should be smaller than the rock itself. So let's go back to Unreal and I'll show you my attempt at solving some of these issues. So this is a pretty simple scene. All we have is a landscape. Um, Unreal's skylight here and some billboards. Uh, I just grabbed these from Megascans just to make some interesting shadows. 
Uh, this is the reference image that I've been using for this scene. Uh, I'm not trying to replicate it exactly, but just get sort of the same feel. And the effect that I am specifically trying to replicate, though, is, is this, uh, this here where you have small rocks that sort of fall into the cracks and recesses between the larger rocks. This is something that can't be replicated or created in any other method, really, other than simulating. You would have to place these all individually by hand, which really isn't the right way to go. So uh, you can see that I've just put a uh, sort of a stony texture here on the landscape. That's just in case there are places where you can see between the between the gaps of the rocks that I'm going to be putting down. And to be clear, this scene isn't meant to be um, a real-time scene. I'm just looking for something uh, just uh, to make a nice thumbnail sort of to advertise the plugin. I'm not concerned about performance too much for this example. Uh, so I have here some stones that I wrapped in blueprints, just like the, the meshes that I, I showed in the previous demo. Um, so the difference is here, I've created multiple versions of each stone and sort of scaled them. Uh, this is actually really irresponsible. Uh, don't do this. Textile density is important. But uh, having said that, uh, let's just get started with some of these big stones. Uh, with my current naming convention, these are all the ones that end in underscore seven. So... Uh, 7 is the highest and they go from 7 to 0 based on size. So we'll just add um, we'll just add these guys to the list here and maybe uh, maybe drop some of these in the scene. And then uh, we'll clear the list and then we'll add some some smaller ones. Now I won't make you watch my entire process for doing this. Um, I, I wanted to get things sort of just the way I, I want them for this image. Uh, so I'll, I'll just open up this other level here, which has the uh, the completed scene. And so you can see here clearly that uh, our goal for having the smaller rocks or fill the, the spaces between the larger rocks, that, that's been achieved quite nicely. Um, and then once, once I placed all the stones, then I just added a, a few plants here and there just to kind of give a little bit of visual interest. I'm not quite finished with this image yet. Uh, I'd like to add a few leaves and twigs here and there and maybe adjust the lighting a bit, but for the most part, it's 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 about 90% there. So if you are an Unreal user and you're interested in being a part of the beta, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, I'm looking for users with a bit of experience. You don't have to be a professional or anything as long as you are willing to give feedback and you know your way around the editor a bit. Um, so if that sounds like you, feel please feel free to reach out. You can do so uh, through the contact page on our website. Uh, there's a link to that in the video description. And if you do reach out, feel free to introduce yourself. I don't have many contacts in the gaming industry yet, so I'd, I'd love to hear from you. You can stick uh, a link to your ArtStation page or your website or YouTube channel or just say what studio you're from. Uh, if you do that, that'd be awesome. Uh, you don't have to worry. I'm not going to be uh, filtering out uh, you filtering beta applicants just based on their their art skills or anything like that that's not the point so uh and then if you uh share this video with other developers that you know that'd be awesome as well uh, i want to thank everyone for watching uh, and i'll see you next time